Hello everyone and welcome to the inaugural episode of Martial Arts Radio Live. This is the, I don't know, convergence, I don't want to say culmination, this is the whole intersection of a lot of things that we've been figuring out between Martial Arts Radio and First Cup and now with uh, Who'd Win and just a bunch of the stuff that we're doing and I thought, hey, let's see if we can do this once a month Kind of bring some of the fun that we had with episode two, three, and four hundred, and just kind of lean into it, see what happens. As you can see, I am not in the typical environment that I—I I don't think I've recorded anything up here other than a few promo videos for products. But we're in the warehouse. We're in the space that will probably ultimately become a small training space. I mean, I've, I've done training up here. I've actually taught people up here. Uh, you can see, what do you see behind me? You got spray foam. You have the world's most expensive, uh, awkward mannequin that has never been used because it's such a pain to put together. Anybody who ever, anybody who works at clothing stores and has to deal with mannequins, I'm sorry. I think it's a nightmare. Uh, what do we got over my right shoulder? We got a, a rollout banner that I bring to events. And what's on the table? We've got one of the newer products. This is uh, insulated mug. This is like your like your Yeti knockoff. Uh, can you read that? It's reversed. Uh, Caution, contents may encourage inner ninja. And then you got the logo, but it's pretty rugged. Uh, you could probably kill somebody with that if need be. So thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Now, we're going to do some things differently than we typically do in a martial arts radio episode because it's live. So with all the challenges, hey Ray, uh, with all the challenges that come through with a live show, we're trying to do some positive things too. And here's the first thing that I'm gonna throw out to you. One of the things that we're hoping to do is build some of the reviews. So we've got iTunes reviews, we've got Facebook reviews, we've got Google reviews. At the end of the show, we're gonna be raffling off two gift certificates for each of those three locations. Hi, Frank. Hi, Becca. If you leave a review, or you've already left a review, you're in the drawing. And that'll keep happening month after month. Because, yes, we're doing this the first Tuesday of every month. We'll see how it goes. Andrew, I'm glad you were able to make it as well. And I want to I start the show by giving a shout-out to Gabe C.U., uh, Sensei Gabe, who, behind the scenes, has helped put this together. As anybody who knows me personally or even can just you know put dots together hi Stacy uh, you know that I am overwhelmed overworked there's a ton going on and I can't tackle these new projects without help so since I gave volunteered we, we've talked on the phone we've done a bunch of emailing and if you look at anything to do with the event Gabe did it is this going to air as a Monday or Wednesday episode? I think you mean Thursday, but uh, yes, the plan is that we're going to take this recording and then dump it out as a Thursday audio feed at some point, uh, probably also upload it uh, as video to YouTube. We are not going to preempt a Monday episode. Speaking of Monday episodes, I recorded two today. Uh, let's see. One with someone... Here, we'll make this the first trivia question. I recorded an episode with someone today who is from a country that we have, I don't know if we get to call it a separate country. I recorded with someone from Scotland. This person was the first person we've, I've ever talked to from Scotland on the show anyway. Uh, and then the second person that I interviewed today, you may not know by name, you would most almost definitely recognize. And if I told you where they got their start in acting, you would 100% recognize that movie. So um, I'm going to be mixing in trivia. I dropped a poll in here. Uh, where is it? Because I've got the computer, right? So I can try to interact with people. That was one of the hopes. If I can find it, where did it go? I dropped in a poll somewhere uh, to see your answers to the question, who would you want to train with? So if you've listened to the show for a while, you know that uh, 
Frank's asking, am I the only one not getting a clear picture? So one of the things I'm not sure of, it's coming through okay for me, but the internet out here is a little spotty. If it's a nightmare for everybody, I'll do a different set next time. But I shut a lot of things off, so hopefully it's okay. We're just gonna run with it because I'm not gonna break down and set up another time. Andrew says it looks good, so at least some of you are seeing it fine. Uh, yeah, so, yep, the poll's there. People are starting to respond to it. I want to know if you had the opportunity to train with anybody in the martial arts anywhere in the world. You know, we ask that question. I We. I ask that question on the show often. I want to know your answers. I want to know what you think. So uh, hit the Facebook poll. Let me know what's going on. Okay. Now, we're also doing a couple show-only discounts because... We threw a bunch of ideas at the wall, see what sticks, see what people like, get some feedback. We'll see what happens. So, um, two discounts. First one, have you guys seen these? And have you seen them in red? So, the red's fairly new. Uh, but these are the Pursuit gloves. We call these a semi-contact glove. They're not a boxing glove. They're not a pad glove. You're not gonna, you're not gonna take this and, and beat on the heavy bag for hours on end. Uh, they're not built to withstand that, but maybe even more importantly, your the padding's not built for that. But they are for more aggressive sparring. Uh, they're a great glove. And during the show, they are only $29.99 with free shipping. If you use the code LIVE1, here's the other code. LIVE2 is 25% off everything. And again, this is just for the show. So I'll, I'll mention that a couple times. This is not meant to be a horrendously commercial Thing. Hey, Gabe's here. Cool. Uh, all right. Now, the whole point of this is the ability to interact. I want to be able to engage with all of you. So keep the comments coming. Keep the questions coming. Now, one of the things that we did, again, thanks to Gabe, is that we kind of preloaded some, some questions, some topics in here, some things to talk about. And the one that I want to start with, this question came in from Andrew. Here's a question. Should black belt tests be open or closed? How open or closed? Can Joe Schmo off the street attend? Just other students? Only other black belts? Awesome question. And the reason I like this as a question is because I've seen it done in so many different ways. Really different ways. My original black belt test was limited to people testing and the people assisting in the test. That was it. No spectators. If you had earned a black belt prior, you were probably, hey, you're welcome, Andrew's watching. You were probably going to be invited in to participate, to support, um, really to, to beat on the black belt candidates. But I've also been part of tests where anyone can come and observe, where it's more of a, more of an event. And I think that there's value in both. So when I think back to my first test, one of the things that was really valuable to me is how powerful it was. By not having spectators, you could do anything. And you could push some of those limits. And it's from having those limits pushed that that test meant a lot to me. I, I can reflect back on that time and I can really think about how I was challenged and I was able to overcome those things. But then when I look at subsequent tests in other styles, when I think about the fact that other people could, could watch, that families could all feel like they were part of this journey. Because let's face it, if you make it to Black Belt, there's a good chance that other people have been loving and supporting you, whether it's a spouse or children or parents or grandparents. You know, we, we, tend, to, we tend to have others along for the ride. So being able to have those people observe that test, I think can also be pretty powerful. Of course, there's a big difference in those tests, right? You've got private tests where people are getting banged on, and then you've got more public tests that honestly aren't as, in my experience, aren't treated as, as uh, aggressively because you have people watching that may not understand what's going on. Right? What a school should choose is entirely up to what the personality of the school is. However you choose to, to handle it is going to affect the culture of the school. 
every choice affects the culture and there's no right or wrong it's it's just going to lead to different experiences and ultimately different people excuse me different people sticking around and being part of that school so if I take a look uh, looks like I, I gotta refresh this there we go we got a bunch of bunch of responses coming in on that vote oh, and we got people writing in in the chat I'm not gonna gotta go Stacy go go respond in the poll <laughs> all right um, I was looking through some of the numbers for the show and one of the things that you you probably don't think about that I think about because I'm a nerd and I like numbers and data I look at where the show's downloaded. Now, as you might imagine, we're a United States-based show. Uh, the poll is, if you go into Martial Arts Radio Live, uh, the event for today, if you look at the event and then the sub-event that's today, I posted it in there. I can see it. It's, it's just below the live feed. Um, so the U.S. is number one, Australia, the U.K., Canada. And the one that I found interesting in the top ten is that is Iraq. <laughs> now, I'm guessing that there's some traction among deployed soldiers, which is interesting because I haven't, I don't get much feedback from soldiers on deployment. I've talked to a couple over the years, but not a lot there. Now, one of the one of the questions I wanted to throw out, I wanted to throw out a trivia question, and if you're the first person to get this right, you're gonna you're gonna message me, you're gonna email me, and I'm gonna send you a twenty dollar gift certificate. There are geez, one, three, there's like twenty countries that have had one download, just a single download over the last few years. If you're the first person to name one of them, and you can only guess once, you get a twenty dollars gift card to the to the store. I'm looking at a bunch of them. Some of them would make sense. Others, you might be surprised by. So I'll just watch the chat here. And in between, you've just got a whole bunch of bunch of downloads. And we're we're coming up on five hundred thousand five hundred thousand downloads. A ton, ton. Andrew's saying, Indonesia, no. Indonesia's had more than one. I, didn't, I don't have the full list in front of me, because there's a lot of, it's like 250 countries. I don't have that written down. Mm. All right, next topic, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch. We'll keep doing this. How to deal with students who are forced to attend classes and... There's a there's an eye roll emoji here and said parents. Great question. If you've ever run a school or spent much time teaching, you know how difficult students who don't want to be there can be. Generally children, right? Adults don't tend to do things that they don't want to do. Hmm. There's nothing fun in there. It's tea. Um, so how do you deal with that? You know the number one way that I found to deal with that? You gotta make it fun. It's the same way that I deal with students who want to be there. I make it fun. I spend as much time as I can trying to make it enjoyable because if you're having fun and they're having fun, it doesn't matter if they didn't want to come in the first place. They're at least going to be less distracting, less impactful on everyone else. Is that always easy? No, absolutely not. And there are plenty of parents out there who see martial arts instruction as inexpensive daycare. And that's unfortunate because there's a good chance that if that's the way the parent's treating their child, that the kid actually needs martial arts. They probably need some of the support from instructors. They need the, the life skills because it sounds like the parent might be handing that off to other people. But you gotta do what you can. And sometimes there comes a point where you've got to say, this isn't working. There's the door. 
funny stories. So we got a few of these here. Not going to read all of them. Some were, were a little long. This one comes in from Gabe and Jenny. During a break at a karate camp, I walked by a group of girls sitting together and overheard, quote, that's why I was thinking about putting blueberries in his ears. Kind of want to know the rest of that story. Reminds me of um, Louis Black, the end of one of his early albums. He did an album talking about, and I would have made it through school if it wasn't for that horse. Nobody else remembers that one. My first, uh, this one's from Brett. My first day of Hapkido, an armbar was being performed on me during sparring. The guy squeezed so hard he passed gas really loudly right in my face. I accidentally called him an SOB. My instructor was kind of upset with me until he smelled it and then called him an SOB himself. <laughs> I can totally see that happening. Honestly, one of my greatest fears in grappling is farting on my partner. Has not happened that I know of. I would probably know. This one's from Shell. Gee pants split, and not a little, but the whole seam was worn out. Hot pink underwear. Just kept going like nothing happened, and not one of the guys in the room said a thing, ever. You've got some good training partners, Shell. This one's from Sven. Saw a third dawn black belt get so excited about taking a, a child student through their pattern, he accidentally coughed up a big loogie, which landed on the kid's recently washed gi. <laughs> After looking around to see if anyone noticed, he tried to quickly brush it off the kick before anyone saw it. Safe to say, that only made the situation even messier. <laughs> oh God, that's awful. Oh, gross. Stephanie says, I put my helmet on backwards and didn't notice, so I left it like that until someone said something. I've seen a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. No other guesses on the country? One person is guessed? So if you're just joining us, we're, I've asked everyone, there are about 20 countries that have had a single download of Martial Arts Radio. And if you can be the first one to name one of those countries, I'll give you a $20 gift card. Also, we're doing raffles at the end, two each for Facebook reviews, Google reviews, iTunes reviews. I, I have no, I'm not going to pretend that I have any shame about asking for reviews. I will throw you free stuff. Andrew, you're right. You can only guess once. Uh, we got a guest coming in for North Korea? No. South Africa? No. Madagascar. No. I would have guessed that one to be one of the ones on the list, but it's not. Funny, huh? Ah. What else we got going on here? No, there's another trivia question. We'll ask that one later. Japan? No. Lots of, lots of Japan. Luxembourg? No. Nope. Iran. Yes. Tommy, you're the first one to get it. So go ahead, shoot me an email. I'll send you a code for a $20 gift card. Here are the others on that list. Egypt, Kosovo, Uganda, Nepal, Lithuania, Guinea, Paraguay, the Bahamas, Iceland, Belize, Colombia, Martinique, Tanzania, Fiji, and Guam. Nice job. It, it's funny when I dig in and I, I look at all the numbers and see that, you know, it, the show really spread pretty quickly. It, it wasn't like all early on, it was all U.S. I mean, we, we started seeing international downloads really quickly. Uh, some of that might be that there weren't a lot of martial arts shows at the time. Some of it might be just, you know, the reach of the Internet. Um, but one of the things that, that surprises me, and this came through in the conversation I had with someone from Scotland today, that media in the United States still holds some, some weight internationally. The fact that I was interviewing this person from the United States, 
seem to make it more impactful, which I found fascinating because I, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's my own ignorance because I, I live in the U.S. And, and, you know, have this very American centric view of the world. But if someone from another country was interviewing me, I don't know that I would see that as much different. Maybe I would. I don't know. Nobody from, actually, has anybody from another country interviewed me? I don't think so. I haven't been on very many podcasts. I'd like to. I'd like to do more. Actually, wait, was I on? No, I wasn't on Joe's show. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Next trivia question before we move on to the next topic. And I'll let you guys think about this one because I don't think you're going to get it. Top downloaded episode of all time. Here's a hint. It's not Bill Wallace. That's the one everybody guesses. It's not Bill Wallace. Let's see how we're doing with the training poll. Last I looked, we were up to three different responses. Oh, we're at five. Okay. Uh, now, I started the poll by plugging in Bruce Lee because you would think at least somebody would guess Bruce Lee. We got it started. So we got guesses coming in for episode one and we've got guesses coming in for Fumio Demura and no. Episode one does tend to get a lot of downloads um, in part because it's episode one, in part because Master Alexander is well known in New England uh, and, and beyond, of course. But no, no. And, you know, one of the things that's funny about the show is I have people write to me and they say, I just found your show, you know, four months ago or a year ago. And I started listening and I've gone back to the beginning. And I've made it through 242 episodes as of today. It's a lot of listening to my voice. I don't even want to hear my voice that much. Frank says the Victor Moore, Vic, the Victor Moore episode actually has a lot of downloads. But no, that's, that's not... That's not the top one. And I think a lot, a lot of those people who are downloading, many of those people who are downloading a lot of episodes, it's because they drive a lot and they just chew through podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't know that I could handle... Well, let's see. Do I... There are shows that I've listened to in the past that have been five days a week. And I usually burn out from them. Is this one that we can still only guess once? Hmm. Well, I'm not going to, you know what? I'm not going to throw a, a, a gift card at this one. We'll, we'll do some other trivia with a gift card. But um, no, you can guess more than once. I just want to see if you guys can get it. And don't just, don't just go through and, and list out all the episodes. That would be lame. People are writing to me. Why are people writing to me? Uh, oh, got people writing in. Boz Rutten, good guess, but no. No, not that. Um, so right now we've got Bruce Lee with, with three votes. Hanshi Toyama Kankin, Joe Louis, Enko Utosu, and Mark Shuey. Um. Mark Shuey's been on the show. He's a nice guy. I like him. Generally see him at uh, Sifu Alan Goldberg's event in New Jersey. And he has these absolutely beautiful canes that he makes. Really like him. Uh, Jesse Anko. Good guess? No. No. The Karate Nerd is not the best, the, the number one download. Oh, I should have put more tea in there. Oh, well. All right, so the next topic that we can get into a little bit. Competitions for, and, and you can use different words for this. I, I mean, no offense if someone dislikes this, but this was written in as competitions for the disabled. Uh, Frank says Brent Philpott. No. Uh, Andrew's last guess, Ian
There we go. It's back. Yes, I'm drinking tea. I know. No coffee because it's not the morning and uh, it's not a hundred episodes, so I'm not drinking alcohol. <laughs> um, where, where was the other comment that came through? There was another one here. Uh, June Re. No, no, the June Re episode, I'll be honest. If you haven't checked out that June Re episode, you should. Um, but it didn't do really well, and I think part of it was the subject matter. If you listen to that episode, you know, one of the things I, excuse me, I like about the show and the way we do the show is that it gives the guests the freedom to talk about what they want to talk about. And so you get snapshots of people at certain moments in time. If we had talked to June Rhee 30 years ago, it would have been an entirely different conversation. But this episode with June Rhee, uh, it wasn't June Rhee. Uh, <laughs> I just, I'm riffing on it because... So what I do. Um, this episode was was a lot about faith and philosophy for him, and I would imagine as a man who was near the end of his life in immense pain. Um, you know, if you listen to the end of that that episode, he pretty much just said, "I I, I got to go take a nap." Like it was it was abrupt. Um, I'm trying to remember what he was facing physically. I, think it was I don't remember what it was oh Stacy said that she loved it yeah anytime someone's willing to be open and honest with me uh, especially vulnerable on the show do the combined downloads of the two parts of the Tony Blower episode count no because if I hadn't split it, it would have been one uh, for a long time, that was one of the top episodes, and and it, it should be. It's a fantastic episode. If anybody is interested in uh, what some people call reality-based self-defense or, um, you know, kind of street philosophy, I, I don't know how else to, to term it, but um, I've listened to Tony Blower on a number of podcasts. Um, he, not so much now, but for a number of years, was really big in the CrossFit world. Most people who know me and know me from the show know that uh, in addition to martial arts, I'm involved in CrossFit. And Tony put on a clinic, episode 108, if I remember correctly. He absolutely put on a clinic. It, two, two and a half hours, something like that. And he broke down everything about his system and where it came from and philosophy. I think I asked him two questions. He just kind of went and it was great. I didn't have to do anything other than watch and, let's be honest, by the end, cross my legs because it had to be two and a half hours. It's a long time. So, yeah. So I brought up this question here that was submitted, um, or this topic, this discussion topic of competitions for the disabled. And I, I kind of want to pivot on that a little bit in that Martial arts is something that a lot of schools at least say they teach and value teaching those with special needs. I've talked to people who have uh, special classes for folks on, on the autism spectrum and, and other classes. I know a number of people who've done some one-on-one -on -one stuff. I've done a little bit of one-on-one -on -one with special needs individuals. And it's something that if you've worked with people, you know how powerful martial arts can be. I mean, it's powerful for everyone, but for a portion of the population who doesn't always succeed based on what is typically defined as success, here you've got something and You've probably heard me say this on the show. Martial arts gives back what you put in. It doesn't matter where you're starting from. So you've got people who are used to putting in and not getting anything back because they can't meet what others are drawing as minimum standards. If they try and they have fun and they learn, you know, they progress. Maybe they're not going to be the next great competitor but it's still checking a lot of boxes. Ooh. 
clearly I'm, I'm better at talking at length earlier in the day. <laughs> so if there are that many schools with that many special needs students out there, why are there not more special needs competitors? Now, I don't have an answer to that. I don't run a school. Uh, not Shannon Lee, though that episode has done very well in a fairly short period of time. I don't have ties to anyone with special needs. I have no agenda with this. I would just expect to see more special needs divisions at events. In fact, I have refereed and had special needs divisions on the roster that we were supposed to be doing, and no one showed up to participate in them. And these aren't massive tournaments, but statistically, there should have been a few people. And I can't answer why that is, but I would like to see more. I would like to see more, you know, I, mean, I wanna see more people. Hey, Eric. I wanna see more people competing in general. I wanna see more people representing the full breadth of what martial arts is in competition, and that includes people coming from special needs uh, segments. So, that's my thought. Had a bunch of guesses. Nobody's getting it. Where are we at on the who would you train with question? I'm assuming Bruce Lee is still winning. No new votes. You guys got to get in there. Vote it up. What else you got? Uh, Tommy says Yang Sheng Fu. I don't know that name, but based on what Tommy trains and the name, I'm going to guess it's some kind of Kung Fu practitioner. Stacy writes in, the USBA, US Breaking Association, and NEO, Northeast Open, a tournament in Albany. Shout out to Master Adam Grogan, episode 5 do an amazing job with neurodiverse people. Informs sparring breaking. It truly is inspiring. Oh, cool. Eric, you've missed a ton. I'm not, I can't catch you up. Got to be here on time. Oh, you know, I don't know where, what we're going to do with this, but I found this. I don't know how long I've had this. This book is old. And I don't know if we'll do it today, but at some point, the date on this 96 at some point uh we'll raffle this off or we'll we'll use it as a as a giveaway because i've read it. i don't need to read it again i'll say it again because we're at the halfway point get these gloves for 29.99 at whistlekick.com with the code live one and if that's not what you want, Live 2 gets you 25% off, again, just for the show. So you get another 30 minutes. Buy yourself a hoodie or a mug. Or uniform. Oh, we just got a bunch more of the uh, Olympic Taekwondo hands and feet in, too. So those are there. You can use those. There was something else I wanted to do. Oh, and don't forget, leave reviews. You know, um, I'm throwing out gift cards. I did miss that. Stacey says, Lynn Man Manuel Miranda passed through. That would have been fun. Um, yeah, the, the Northeast Open happens at the same time as another event. And this is, so this is one of the challenges. I get invited to a lot of things. And even if I conceded having any social life, which I don't have much of one. Even if I conceded my own training, which I don't do that much, taking care of my home, all those things, I still wouldn't be able to attend everything because there are weekends where there are four or five things. So do what I can. And honestly, I've started to pull back on going to a lot of events. Uh, excluding the stuff that I do with Team Whistle Kick because I love being there, supporting them, coaching them. But I've pulled back because starting to find ways to reach out, you know, like this, to engage with a bunch of people. You know, I'm having conversation, I'm, I'm reaching out to all of you, and I get to go sleep in my bed when I'm done, which is awesome. My bed's comfy. I like my bed. I don't know about all of you. 
hopefully you enjoy your own bed as well. Hotel beds very rarely shape up or, or you know, match up. There we go. Words. Words are hard. I needed more topics. We got a couple others on here, but I'm not. So like I've got I've got karate combat here. And for those of you that don't know about karate combat, karate combat. Oh good. Questions coming in. That's what I want to say. Uh, karate combat is a full contact sparring league that I think they've had three or four of them. And if you're following Marshall Journal, uh, Rob and Scott have talked about karate combat over there a fair amount. And it's a cool idea. And I've watched some of the footage. There's cat hair all over me. But I just... I haven't, I haven't gotten into it. Is it cool? Yeah. Do I want to watch it? Yes. Do I want to watch it enough that I'm going to not watch other things? Apparently not. Because I would have. Eric says, will you be covering updates on the introduction of karate in the 2020 Olympics in the show? At some point. And yes, Eric says, Bosrutin is involved with, with karate combat. Um, I'm waiting to see what's going on with 2020. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the Olympics. Um, I would love to say I'm expecting an overwhelming success. My gut tells me it's going to be a disaster. And that's not being um, negative. I'm not trying to be skeptical. But there's just so much infighting around it. Uh, Lessie is waving hi from Japan. And so I want to give a shout out to Lessie for those of you that don't know. She is also behind the scenes on Martial Arts Radio helping to book guests and bringing her in to help with that was one of the greatest things that has ever happened. So thank you, Lessie. Uh, she's been getting great guests, more diverse guests. And if somebody writes in that I don't want to interview, I just blame her. <laughs> that really hasn't happened. Um, maybe. Maybe. But no, yeah, she, she's been a tremendous help and it allows me to focus on other things. So, yeah. We may not run the line. I don't know. I don't know how much stuff we need for an hour-long show. I don't do hour-long shows. I ask people questions for an hour. Then I do 15 minutes in the morning. If you're not watching First Cup, you're missing out on me in a bathrobe drinking a cup of coffee completely improvising everything it's like this but on my couch and with less structure as unstructured as this is it's less structure hard to believe i know i probably should have plugged my phone in hold on i'm gonna check and see how the battery's doing oh we're good 63 percent plenty uh Eric says, karate combat seems too little too late to the world of combat martial arts. Almost like it should have been what kickboxing was in the 90s. I, I, can, I can see that point. Um, I don't think there's anything that makes it truly compelling. They've done a good job of trying to position fighters with having personalities. They've tried to make it country versus country, and that's been helpful. But it just, it, it doesn't seem to be the magic sauce. Andrew says, how many requests do you get to come to events? Um, I probably get two or three per month on top of the stuff that's already happening. So if you think about the martial arts circuits that are around, that I'm involved in, that Team Whistlekick is involved in, you know, across the course of the year, we've got probably 30 to 35 tournaments that we could be attending just from those circuits. And then you've got camps. People invite me to teach. People invite me to their school. 
So I just can't do it all. <laughs> Frank says, lose an hour in the morning and you will spend all day looking for it. Spend part of that hour watching First Cup. <laughs> uh, I want to give Frank a shout out. Frank, make sure I always have great questions to answer on First Cup because First Cup's question driven. And if you go back to before there were good questions, really before there were any questions, there would be times where I would sit there with my cup and coffee and go, uh, because I wasn't awake yet. And I didn't have anything to say. I can ramble. Most of you know, I can ramble. I can talk all day about nothing. It might not be interesting, but I can at least do it. But Frank saves me. Make sure I have stuff to, stuff to say. Eric says, also karate combat can't begin to compete with the eyeballs focused on the UFC. No, it can't. But it also doesn't have to. It has to deliver something different. Something strongly different. And I don't, I don't pretend to know what that is. I have some ideas. There are there are plans that I hope to one day uh, bring to fruition around revolutionizing traditional martial arts competition. I'm not going to talk about them because we're not ready. And to be perfectly honest, everything that's going on with whistle kick is about building brain reputation and cash flow so we can get to that stage. Because when you think about the boxes that I'm trying to check, bring more people into the martial arts and make the martial arts more respected globally, competition will do that the way that I'm envisioning this. Um, hosting a, a good competition is expensive. Eric says, how about a WMAC Masters reboot? Who would be in it? When you think about the characters from, from that show, almost across the board, everybody that was part of that show is still more popular than what you would look at it as today's current crop of martial artists, martial arts actors that would step in and be on that show. And where did we come to learn of those people in that show? Most of them we've learned about through competition. So, uh, it's an interesting show if you haven't checked out WMAC Masters. You should. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I've seen the whole thing. I don't know if I've seen all of it. I've definitely seen some of it. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's raining. And out here in the warehouse, it's a metal roof. So hopefully that doesn't become too obnoxious. We've got a bad storm passing through. And for all I know, thunder and lightning. I might lose you. And if I lose you, I'm sorry. Nothing I can do. Yeah, Andrew says, it was so bad, it was good. And I will agree with that. So... If you could train with anyone, Bruce Lee has the win. So, and it's, it's no surprise, right? When I ask people that question on the show, who do they tend to say? Bruce Lee. In fact, it is rare to get through an episode, if you really think about it, without some mention of Bruce Lee. And I find that fascinating. Here we are 40 plus years after his passing, and he is still the most influential recognizable figure in the martial arts anywhere. I think that's pretty powerful. Remember Final Foo with Ernie Reyes Jr.? No. Another show so bad it was good. Eric says WMAC Masters is on YouTube in entirety. There you go. So if you're looking for something to watch and you've watched every episode of First Cup and you've watched Who'd Win? Episode two, coming soon. It's been sent out for editing. And you've dug through all the episodes of Martial Arts Radio. Then you can go see WMAC Masters. Right. Have we had any more reviews? I'll check that at the end. I don't need to check that right now. What else? I think I had some other stuff hanging in the hopper. Mm, nope. We got through it all. I need more questions. I need more topics for Nesta. 
Somebody help me out. Ask me a question. Martial arts reality show on MTV back in 2005. Wow. How did I not know about this? Do you think there's any benefit to training in regular clothes? Yes. Why? Because if you get in a fight, you're probably not wearing your uniform. You're probably wearing regular clothes. Now, I love the tradition of training in a, in a dobok or a gi or, or whatever you call it. But I also think very highly of training in regular clothes. I just showed up one day to CrossFit in jeans. I wanted to see what I could and couldn't do. I tend to wear jeans with a little bit of stretch. I didn't have any issues. If you've never trained with sneakers, if you're always barefoot, you should train with shoes. If you always train with shoes, you should train barefoot. Because you never know when something's going to happen. I almost, true story, I almost got into a fight with an older gentleman in a locker room because he was being incredibly creepy while I was in the shower. It could have gone sideways. I could have had to, yeah, barefoot, right? So something to think about. No traction, tile floor. Actually, I wasn't barefoot. I was wearing my very cheap shower shoes, but I don't think they were going to provide much traction. And I definitely wasn't kicking anybody wearing those things. No point. But the point is, diversity in training. And I think I did an episode on this. Diversity in training. Whistle kick. No, not that one. Episode 261, Diversity versus Mastery, is coming up. Uh, let's see. Whistle kick training environment. There we go. Episode 113. See, I knew there was an episode on this. Talking about training inside versus outside. Uh, cold versus hot. Who should you call if you hurt your foot? Knowing, Frank, this is a joke. Um, I, I, I don't know. I would say the doctor, but I probably wouldn't call anyone. <laughs> All right. Ten minutes left. We're going to start winding this thing down because I want to wanna give stuff away. A tow truck. <laughs> Uh, Frank, we're going to find a way to incorporate your humor into something more regularly because you have a gift, my friend. You have a gift. Uh, anything? No, no, no. Okay. So, let's look at, let's look at reviews. So we had it's the last review from over on Google. Nothing. Come on, you guys. No Google reviews. How about Facebook reviews? Don't make me sad. Nothing. How about iTunes reviews? There were 132 reviews. And you guys stopped guessing. Yeah, prizes. Someone did guess Victor Moore. Dun, 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 dun. Nope, still at 132. Not one review! Oh, that's fine. It saves me money. All right. Top episode of all time. Not going to be what you think, but you ready? Sifu Tim Smith, T.W. Smith, host of Kung Fu Podcasts. Now, the only thing I can think of is that he's got it linked from somewhere and he's got a great show if you haven't checked out his show you really should he, he mixes it up guests topics just like we do and, and i really like his show carla says if you had to start over what martial art would you start with first uh let me make the disclaimer that that you know i i i'm a firm believer that you choose the martial art based on the instructor and the opportunity, not 
the art itself, but let's say all of those things were equal. Let's say I lived in a city and had time and there were wonderful instructors of everything I could imagine. If I was going to start over, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. Because here, here's, here's why. Here's why I'm saying this. I found that whatever the first martial art someone trains in substantially, that that becomes their perspective on martial arts in general. I've, I mean, most people know I started with karate. And when I look at Taekwondo, I tend to see it as variations of karate. I know Taekwondo people who have trained in other things, and they tend to see things as Taekwondo. That isn't necessarily good or bad, but knowing that, I don't know if I would want to do things differently. I am fortunate in that the karate background I had was very diverse and very open-minded. And so I think that, that breadth of experience was really important. Not all karate schools are like that. So I, I, I don't know that I can answer that one. It's a great question, Carla. So let's start to wrap up. Yes, new Mortal Kombat movie is confirmed. Reboot. I don't know if Chris Casamassa will be reprising his role as Scorpion, but hopefully. Uh, if you listen to the Ludi Lin episode, you know that he is playing Liu Kang. Wonderful choice on the part of the casting. So let's start to wind down here. We're going to do this show every Tuesday, first Tuesday. So what's the next one? Next one is, uh, where is it? I don't know. I can't pull that up right now. First Tuesday of the month, 8 p.m. Eastern. But I want to make sure that this show grows and adapts and becomes more of what everyone wants. If you look at everything we do at Whistlekick, that's been a hallmark of what we do. First Cup has morphed. Martial Arts Radio has morphed. We got a lot of feedback on the first episode of Who'd Win, and so episode two is going to be better and different. I want this to be the same thing. So I appreciate... Gabe says, November 5th. Thanks, Gabe. Um, oh, there's an iTunes review. Thank you. I want your feedback. Leave your feedback in the, in the discussion. Gabe will take it, run with it. We'll figure it out. We'll continue to make it better. And we'll be back with more great stuff. All right. Let's do this review thing. So. We need a random number generator. Because I want to make this fair. Random number generator for Facebook reviews. Not Facebook. Google reviews. All right. This one is for Susanna Gravel. Susanna says, quality product. I wouldn't spar anything else. Susanna, if you're watching, reach out. I will send you a, what did I say? $20 gift card. Uh, reviews on Facebook. All right. So Stacy's the first one, the only one to leave one today. So Stacy, shoot me a message. And let's see, out of the rest of them, who's the name? Uh, man, I gotta scroll, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. All right, one, two, three, four, five. And the next one is Phil Rivera. Phil, if you're watching, 
shoot me a message. $20 gift card. And iTunes. Bam. Oh. How am I going to do this? There's a lot of people. A lot of reviews on iTunes. Guys, you... A bunch of you killed it for me over there at some point. I appreciate that. Most recent. All right. I don't see any new ones there. Sometimes they can take some time. All right. Uh, random number, final one here. Will the introduction of karate diminish or overshadow Taekwondo in 2020? Bottom line, I think... I think there's already too much to the layman in terms of combat sports in the Olympics. You got fencing, you got judo, you got wrestling, you got boxing, you got taekwondo, and now you got karate. There's a push to get mixed martial arts in there. There are a lot of pushes. I think given the new taekwondo uniforms, which are utterly ridiculous, I think we are going to see taekwondo drop. Unless karate botches it so bad that taekwondo is not pulled out. All right, and so iTunes reviews. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and this one uh, says, I study Bagua, and although there isn't too much about the Chinese art, this is a review from three years ago, I still enjoy this podcast very much. I do have one critique, though, Jeremy. Try not to leave too much dead air between questions and answers. Keep up the good work. Well, that's gotten a lot better. <laughs> uh, so this is from Toblakai23. I don't know who you are, but email me or, and show me uh, um, your, your Apple login, and I'll get you a $20 gift card as well. So, throwing out a bunch of gift cards. All right, last couple things before we shut down. Hey, 9 o'clock. You can get this mug. What are these? 30 bucks. You can get these gloves. They're normally 45 bucks. Act in like the next five minutes. Code live one. Get them for 30 bucks. Uh, if you want something else, 25% off with live two. That'll go for like another, I, I had to set it to an hour block. So um, I think you got like another 30 minutes on it. Okay, so check that out. It's definitely, it, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not 100% sure when it, when it expires. It definitely expires by the end of the evening, Eastern. So um, Eric says, always so eloquent. Well, thank you. I don't know that I agree with that statement, but I do my best. So final thoughts. I want your feedback. I want your help. Let's make this show something special. Um, the mug does have a top. Uh, I think you can swap. So it doesn't have the slide top, which some people have asked me about. I believe you can swap out a Yeti one. Um, and I'm going to look into it. We we'll, might be able to get some generic ones that will fit as well. Uh, I, I just want your help in turning this into something. This is a show that's been in the back of my head for a long time. And I appreciate you coming by. Everybody's always so supportive. It means a lot to me. This community has been phenomenal. So thank you. I'm going to press end now. And uh, I'll see you around, and I'll definitely see you in a month. Take care.